This is the survival analysis video on Kaplan-Meier curves in the presence of sensory. To calculate a Kaplan-Meier curve in the presence of sensory, the key idea is to realize that patients are no longer at risk once they sensor. I'll repeat the calculations from the previous table, now assuming that the 30-month time point represents sensory rather than death. Now at 30 months, the hazard is zero, since there are no other deaths. However, the size of the risk set at 40 months appropriately reflects the fact that one patient was centered at 30. Because there are no deaths at month 30, the survival curve won't change at that point. To clean up a couple of loose ends, our examples to date have assumed that the time intervals are relatively short. And for example, you don't have to bother keeping track of exactly when with, within month 10 a patient died. If it's important to keep track of this when estimating the size of the risk set, the usual procedure is to assume that both deaths and censoring occur at the midpoint of the interval. And this is a note that in real life, hazard functions seldom take the value of zero, even though the Kaplan-Meier method implicitly assumes that the value of the hazard is zero, except when deaths occur. This distinction becomes less important as the size of your data set increases, since the estimate of the hazard curve becomes smoother and smoother. Although induces a bit of mathematical complexity, this distinction is also appropriately taken into account by the various techniques of survival analysis.